Welcome, everyone, to the Old Testament. No, let's start that again. <clears throat> That's a mess up. Take two. <clears throat> Three, two. Welcome, everyone, to the Old Testament survey analysis. I am not your host. I am the analyst, JD, and Pastor Gavin is the host of the Old Testament survey, uh, where he gives a synopsis of each book of the Bible, and then we do a little uh, discussion, a uh, little discussion after after that. Make sure you tune into both of them. Now, Pastor Gavin and I have discussed the releasing of these episodes, and they've been a little inconsistent lately, and that's because it was a great idea on paper to have new episodes on on my channel and the other and and the after show release on Pastor Gavin's channel, and then do the reverse. It's too much logistical work, so we are now going to be releasing both the Old Testament survey and the after show on Pastor Gavin's channels on uh, Wednesday nights, and then they will release on Sundays on the Boiling Point podcast channels. That's going to be the new release schedule for our Old Testament survey. It should still stay weekly, but we are going to be um, altering um, when they release. Wednesdays now on Pastor Gavin's channel. Sundays on the Boiling Point Podcasts channels. So make sure you look for that. Please hit the like button. Please share it out. And please feel free to leave us a comment. Pastor Gavin would love to hear from uh, some of our viewers. Uh, Pastor Gavin, we just talked, you just covered the book of, um, and I'm going to really try here. Yep, of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Right. Um, and there were some interesting, I didn't realize that some of the uh, things came from this book. Um, that's one of the things that, about this Old Testament survey that's that's been beneficial to me, Pastor. <laughs> is that um, the amount of stuff that I'm learning as well? Like I'm not a, I'm definitely not a Bible professional by any stretch of the word, not even close. Okay, I very much a self proclaimed novice, still learning, still reading, but I did not realize. That's the books, like the titles of all the books of the Bible didn't even like, because I've never really bothered to look at all the titles or all the books, you know, I'm reading through it, you know, one book at a time. So mm -hmm. um, that's the way, best way I found to, for me to tackle it for my first time is just take one book, read it, then take another book and read it, or it gets too overwhelming, which yeah. is what led us, which is what led us here to this series. Mm -hmm. um, but I did not realize that um, some of the talking points that I have um, were in this book, like uh, the, the, um, you were talked about like uh, the scripture that says there's a time for work, there's a time for play, a time for life and death and, you know, mm. for everything. Right. Right. Yeah. And I did not realize that that came in this book. And I think that's an important mm. scripture right there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's uh, mm. it, there. There's, you know, it's good to work, but there's nothing wrong with uh, having fun either. You know, that it's both, uh, both of, you know, part of life that, yeah, exactly. Just mind for us. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's there's a time for 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 everything. You know what I mean? It's not you, and that's something that I struggle with. I don't know about you, Pastor Gavin, but sometimes I struggle with working too much and not taking enough time for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have that problem, but it's certainly something that I struggle with because I don't like. You know what I mean? Also, probably because of me, you know, some of my years right after out of high school, I definitely wasted a few of those years, and so now I feel like I'm making up for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, I think the, the scripture talks about, you know, that that's particular scripture, I think to me it says that, you know, whatever like like you said, life is it's it's life. Everything that's involved in life is a part of life, all of it. Mm. And you can't get away from any one thing or any other thing about right. life. You just can't do that. Yeah. And that includes even some of the like our sinful behavior, anger, lust. That's just all part mm. of living, right? <clears throat> yeah. But yep. the point is to control the, the point is to control 
right your sinful yeah. behavior and your sinful thoughts that's what separates yeah. us from animals right yeah yeah um and you said something about um I, I didn't get it. You went, you were, you were, there was a bunch of stuff happening. I tried to write down little notes to remind me, but you said something about like uh, when you're working to put forth effort. Oh yeah. It says, uh, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. And then he goes on to say, cause you know, once, <laughs> once you die, you're, you know, your shot on this earth is over. So if you're going to work, you know, try to excel and do a good job and put forth an effort. Yeah. So he commends if, hard work and diligence. So yeah. if you, so if, yeah, well, in other words, like when you're doing something, if you're going to take the time to do something, do it right, right. and work yeah. hard at doing it. And you said right. work smarter, not harder. So of course right. there's a difference. When I say, when I say work hard, of course I do mean work smart also, but there are right. times yeah. where you just have, to, where you're going to sweat. There's hard work to be done. You're going to mm -hmm. sweat. You got to roll up your sleeves and that's the way it is. Even if you find an easier way to do it, it's still likely going to be hard work. There's still going to be hard work. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. You know, when he was saying about, you know, you got an ax, an iron ax, sharpen it. Otherwise you're going to have to work harder, you know? And, and, and even the work of sharpening the ax is still going to be less work than trying yeah. to chop through a tree with a dull ax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apologize yeah, for my thoughts. you know, like earlier in life, when we're uh, we're like in school and we're you're learning, that's uh, in a sense that's kind of like sharpening our axe. I mean, you know, if we learn things that are going to help us later on in life, that's uh, that's that's good. We're that yeah, knowledge. Me. You're not just talking about yeah. hard work, like physical right. work, but knowledge as well. Yeah, that too. Yeah. I apologize for my coughing. I was feeling a little under the weather yesterday. Pastor Gavin and I still wanted to uh, get these in and get them done. Back to working hard. If you're going to do something, work hard and and do it right. And I didn't feel like I was sick enough that I didn't want to do this. But not as health, not at 100% either. So here we are. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling, by the way, Pastor Gavin? You've been feeling okay? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Yes. Excellent. Sorry, a little side fact there. Um, fly in the ointments. I did not realize, I did not even realize that that phrase was a biblical phrase. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, then that's something I've said on these series before. How many phrases have we come across? And I'm like, I didn't realize that that was even a biblical phrase. I, I thought it was just a phrase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of them in, uh, you know, in the English language that have come from, you know, the, the Bible. Yeah. yeah, and almost corrupted a little bit by the Bible. It's funny how the you know that this the fly in the ointment, but nobody knows that it came from the Bible. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's almost like it. It's like people, some people who don't believe, feel that it will taint the phrase or something by saying that it came from the Bible, which is completely ridiculous. Hmm. You also talk about putting putting faith in in God and Jesus. Um, but I want to clarify on something, a topic that we've covered a couple of other times in episodes and in these series. Um, we get to heaven through faith in God and Jesus, not right. in good works. Right. Yep. Because we're not Catholic. Right. Yep. So it's, uh, yep, it's, it's through what Jesus did on the cross that we have forgiveness and we apply his sacrifice to us by faith. Yep. We come to him with a heart of repentance and ask God to forgive us on the basis of Christ's death on the cross. And, and when we open up our heart and life to, uh, to Christ. He comes in and uh, the Lord forgives us and pardons us. Yeah. So it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Yeah. And I also want to point out that what something that we've also talked about before <clears throat> that we think the good works are a byproduct of accepting Jesus. Right. Yeah. That's like the good works come as part of that. Not that you have to do them to get to heaven, but you should want to do them because that's what God wants from you. Right. Another way to say it is that uh, we're saved by grace through faith. So faith is the root, but works are the fruit. Like works are what are produced because we do believe. And uh, so another way I, I like to say it is that we don't do good works in order to be saved. 
or to get saved, we do good works because we already are. So like, you know, we want to please, we do care about God now and we love the Lord. And so we want to please him. And we realize, you know, that he's a lot smarter than we are. So if we follow his wisdom, you know, that that's the best way that anyone can live their lives. You know, following the guidance and direction from, from God that we find in his word. Um, and of course, that's uh, that's for you, Dave from America's Tribune. Little shout out to uh, Dave from America's Tribune, there, uh, in case he happens to tune into this episode. Yeah, we're still working on trying to get him on. Uh, Bastard Gavin and Dave have a very busy schedule, but we'll save that for another time. Um. Yeah. So yes, not good works. Faith in Jesus. The good works come as a as a byproduct, or as you said, are the root, mm. and then the uh, the good works are the fruit. Right. Yeah, but, and so like, last, go ahead. So like Ecclesiastes, you know, that's an Old Testament book, so before Christ came, but as New Testament believers in Christ, we can read it and see, you know, that that's a part of fearing God now, you know, that, you know, we, we receive Christ as our Savior and we're saved by grace through faith in him. Yeah. And that's, and now how was it, just, just for clarification purposes, how was it? <clears throat> how was it done before Jesus? Just for clarification good. purposes, something yeah. that we've talked about in other episodes, but just in case anybody hasn't seen them. Yeah, good question. Well, Old Test. What your question is is how were Old Testament saints saved, like before Jesus came? Yeah. Well, they were saved by grace through faith, um, but they trusted in the mercy and in the grace of God for the forgiveness of their sins, and and. Uh, so one way I can prove this is that the Apostle Paul said this very thing in Romans chapter 4. So in Romans chapter 4, like the Apostle Paul, one of the things he's showing in Romans in that book is that we're saved by grace through faith, not by works. And he cites two examples from the Old Testament, Abraham and David. So he quotes like from Genesis where it says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So, you know, it was Abraham's faith in God and in God's mercy and grace. And then David, he, he says, David in the Psalms described the blessedness of the man to whom his, his transgressions are forgiven and his sins are covered. So David spoke about being forgiven and his sins covered, not you know, not, I'm keeping the law, so that's going to save me. Uh, no, David and Abraham are cited by the Apostle Paul's two Old Testament examples of how people were saved, and it was not by keeping the law. It was by grace through faith. <clears throat> Just a minute to make sure we clarified that for everybody. And then yeah. the last thing I wanted to bring up was you talked about fearing, or um, talk about fearing God. <clears throat> yeah. And you, you've said fear and honor God a lot throughout the series. How do you, what do you mean when you say fear God and how do you both fear and honor God? Oh, that, that's a great question. Um, to the, the word to fear God doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean like, oh, I, I'm constantly living in fear that if I may mess up one time, he's going to strike me with lightning or give me a heart attack or so I better behave. Uh, that, that's that's a, a slavish fear. That's not what this is talking about. It's when it says fear God, it means that we have a deep respect or reverence for him. So we take him seriously. And, uh, and that really, that leads us to love God. And one thing I, I think about that kind of illustrates this is with my father, my earthly father. Um, I really respected my dad. So like I would have never thought to just openly defy him or to, to mouth off to him and to speak disrespectfully. I would have never thought to do that because, uh, I mean, I know that, you know, he wouldn't put up with it and I'd, he'd, you know, give me a spanking or whatever, but but that wasn't the main reason. The main reason I would never do that is because I took him seriously 
and I thought very highly of him. So now, you know, so like a secondary emotion, yeah, I'd be afraid to to challenge him or to just blatantly defy him to his face. I'd yeah, I'd be afraid, but that being afraid, that wasn't the main yeah. motivating factor. It was there, you know, to a small degree, but but it was the more about the respect was, you had for him. Right. Yeah. And and that's what fearing God is a deep reverence or respect for God and taking him uh seriously. Yeah. And then the follow-up to that was how how do we both honor and uh fear him in the way that he intends? Yeah. Um, well, in the book of Proverbs, uh it tells us that that uh, we're to choose the fear of the Lord. Uh, and and so it, it it's a choice we make. Okay, in my life, am I going to take God seriously and do what pleases him, or, I'm just, or am I just going to ignore him and, you know, be the God of my own life and, you know, hold on to my right to run my own life the way I want to? Uh, so that's that's really the essence of sin, like wanting to run our own lives independently from God. So fearing God is a choice that we make. And uh, when we read the scriptures, you know, we learn how to do that. And uh, in fact, the word of God, you know, the scriptures, um, they they help us to see God for who he is, which helps us to fear him and and, uh, you know, when we come to know and understand him and his ways more, it helps us to have the proper, you know, regard for God, the proper attitude. And we learn the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So if we were really want to know wisdom, you know, godly wisdom, it begins by fearing God, taking him seriously. And by fearing him in that way, as you yeah. said, like holding reverence to him and respecting him, and you also, right. by the same token, are honoring him. Right, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that's how you do both at the same time, everybody. Yeah, right. Uh, that was all I had. Did you have any other points you wanted to bring up for anybody? Uh, no, that about covers it. Just, uh, you know, honoring God gives meaning to life. So begin while you're young. That's the message of Ecclesiastes. And how many young people, though? I mean, there are young people that do, but how many people probably do come to Jesus and God later in life? You know what I mean? It's it's well not so uh, easy. Not counting you, Pastor Gavin, because you're an enigma. Well, but... statistically speaking, most people that do come to Christ do come when they're younger. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of people that come when they're, they're older. But... Um, well, you're right. You're, you're right. Maybe I said that wrong because I mean you're right. A lot of a lot of younger people do come to to Jesus and stuff, but then you know uh, once you get into your 20s and your early 30s and stuff, it, it's your life is different than than it is at any other point in time in life, and it's certainly hard, speaking from experience, to live your life for the Lord during that time mm. period. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of things that go along with being young that compete for God and. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, temptations you have that when you're younger that aren't as strong when you're older, and and uh, you you learn more wisdom over the years, and uh, that's true. Yeah, and I just wanted to bring that up too. So, yeah. but it doesn't matter when you come, as long as you come to the Lord, that's all that matters. Yep, that's the most important thing. Better late than never. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you know, there is an example of. Uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he died between two thieves. Remember the one thief repented. Yes. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. <laughs> Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That would have been better if he gave his life to the Lord when he was young, but better late than never. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, you just brought, you had to bring that up, Pastor. I knew you were going to do it. Now I have to ask you because <clears throat> we talked about this. I don't think, I don't know if it was during an episode. Do we talk about this during an episode? The the thief that died with Jesus on the cross. I think it was just a phone conversation between us. Yeah. I don't um, know. About, about where did they go after they died? Yeah. Well, I believe that uh, the teaching of scripture is that 
um, before Jesus died and rose again, all the dead went into a place called Hades or Sheol would be the Old Testament Hebrew term. And that phrase means the realm of the dead. And so there was a place where, you know, known as paradise, where the righteous were, and then another place of torment, you know, where those who were wicked and, and died in their sins were, you know, a place of punishment. But after Jesus died on the cross, paradise was moved from the realm of the dead, from Hades or Sheol, directly into the presence of God. The reason we know that is because now uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that he knew somebody and he wasn't sure if they were in the body or out of the body, but the same was caught up under the third heaven into paradise. So the third heaven is a reference to where God dwells. Okay. You know, the first heaven is the atmosphere. The second heaven is you know, where the planets and the sun and the stars are. And then beyond that, the third heaven, the realm of God. That's where paradise is now. Okay, so paradise changed after Jesus passed. Yeah, after he right? after he rose from the dead. Oh, after he rose yeah. from the dead. Okay, so yeah. then what about the criminal? The criminal who who he took with him? Did he take him with him? Yes. Um, okay, actually, I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah. I messed that up. Because um, the because argument that was, said, that was made to me was where was paradise? Um, yeah. And you were saying paradise was moved after that. Um, right. But you're saying, the, but but during that, so so Jesus didn't die on the cross and then go to heaven. He went to Hades, right? Whatever the afterlife was at that time. So right, and that's Hades. where paradise was located in the the righteous portion of Hades, or the righteous okay. portion of Sheol. Um, so you know, you know, Jesus in Luke 16 told a parable about uh, the rich man and Lazarus. So Lazarus was saved. And he died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. But the rich man also died. And it says, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And uh, so the, the rich man who was in hell, he said, hey, send Lazarus so he can dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm tormented in this flame. And, and Abraham said, no, there's a great gulf fixed between us a big chasm and you guys over there can't come here and we can't go there. So there was a, a clear cut separation. And so when Jesus said to the thief today, shalt thou be with me in paradise, he was both in paradise and yet at the same time in the heart of the earth where Sheol or Hades was located. But after his resurrection, uh, you know, everybody in, in, Sheol or Hades in the paradise portion was taken directly to heaven. So now believers who die go directly to heaven in the presence of God. Okay, and that, but that didn't happen then until until, until Jesus Christ arose the from the dead. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. see, that's okay. See, yeah. and that's those are it's all of those little points that we just went over about about um, yeah. uh, paradise being different before Jesus' death and after Jesus' death. This is stuff I think people definitely don't know or they're not going to learn just in a regular church. Yeah. Uh, you don't now hear here's, talk about that very often, but go ahead. You know, here's further proof that now paradise is in heaven. So that's where believers go. Uh, Paul told the Thessalonians about the return of Christ. And he said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So those who sleep in Jesus, sleep is a metaphor for death. So in other words, those who are in Christ who are dead, when Christ descends from heaven with a shout, all those who are asleep in Christ, the dead in Christ, he's going to bring them with him. So, you know, they're up in heaven with Christ right now. So that if we believe Jesus died and rose again, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. And, uh, you know, then the dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically the, you know, the teaching of Scripture. Yeah. Excellent. I already have more follow-up questions, even 
with what you just said, but we could, we're probably going to go for much longer if we don't probably wrap this up. So we'll save some of my questions for the next time. I'm mm -hmm. sure we're going to hit on some of these points again, <clears throat> as we always do. Um, thanks for joining us on that little sidetrack there when we talk about, um, you know, being saved and, and heaven and all that stuff. So I hope you learned something. Please leave us a comment. We definitely would like to hear some from some of the viewers. And we appreciate everybody who tunes into this series very much. Thank you. Um, Pastor Gavin, check out his channel. Uh, just go to YouTube.com. Just search for Gavin Whitcomb Sr. You can find you can find his channel on YouTube. Uh, I'm working very much on trying to get him on Rumble. So hopefully we'll have we'll be able to do that uh, sometime this summer. Um, the Boiling Point Podcast, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. Uh, make sure you check us out, follow us. All of our content is available on our Rumble channel. That's the only place you can find all of our content in its entirety. And that's because of YouTube and Facebook's policies, not because of anything, not because we have an exclusive deal with them, just because Rumble doesn't take down our episodes. So make sure you tune in, hit that like button. Please, please share some episodes out. That would be very helpful as we continue to grow this series and uh, this brand. Uh, did I miss anything, Pastor? Pastor Gavin does the music. Make sure you uh, go. I mean, he's got some music available on his channel. Make sure you go check him out. He's an excellent singer. He's the one that does the music for this particular series. Um, I think that's going to be about everything. So until next time, we'll have more episodes coming soon. Lots of content coming for the Boiling Point Podcast fans. So stay tuned for that. Until next week, where we will be back for another episode. What is next? Uh, what's the next book, Pastor? Uh, Song of Solomon. Ah, the Song of Solomon. Thank you. Yes. See, I was looking around on my notes and I had it somewhere and now it's gone. Um, the Song of Solomon, which I don't know if anybody else knows, but you don't think is a, is a book of the Bible. So it is a book of the Bible and we're going to be talking about it. And in it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I can't, I don't know that. I mean, I don't know that there's many of the books that I've, didn't think that I knew that I end up knowing like a phrase or, or a piece of passage of scripture or something from, but I don't know about the song of Solomon. I will have to find out on that. I'm very excited about it. I hope you're excited. You, you the viewers are excited about the next episode. Stay tuned with us. It'll be uh, next uh, Sunday. If you're watching this, then it is uh, actually, I'm sorry. If you're watching this on pastor Gavin's channel it's Wednesday night. If you're watching this on our channel, it is Sunday night, so just stay tuned until next week, and uh, we'll have you back with another episode. For the host, Pastor Gavin Whitcomb Sr., I am the analyst, JD, and that's the end. Okay.